The Trey Lance thing. <laughs> so here's the deal. I want to shout out, you know Danny Parkins. Yes. Uh, you don't, uh, I think, know Andrew Filipponi. Andrew does radio in Pittsburgh. Danny does radio in Chicago. I went to college with both of them, two of my best friends. They do a podcast called First and Pod. Uh, it's an NFL-only podcast. It comes out twice a week. People, in addition, subscribing to The Right Time with Bamani Jones, that if you're just now joining us, still exists and is coming to your podcast feed shortly. Uh, by shortly, I mean so, oh, like it's short. later today. Short yeah, I just didn't want them to think it was coming out like yeah. the day after this. But very soon, coming shortly. First and Pod's a great NFL podcast. They, to their credit, they are two of only maybe five people, and we are two of the other five, that find the Trey Lance situation baffling and galling. And I want to make this very clear. I am not arguing that Trey Lance is awesome. I have no clue. I am stating the fact that the biggest quarterback busts ever all got three times, four times, five times the opportunity to show whether or not they could play. Jamarcus Russell, Tim Couch, Ryan Leaf, Zach Wilson. Trey Lance has started four games. One of them, by the way, he broke his leg three plays in. Another one was in a monsoon the week before. Right. He, the San Francisco 49ers took a player who barely played D2 college football Traded three first-round picks for him. Then, after they got to an NFC Championship game with their quarterback, said, you can't play for us anymore. We're locking you out of the building. Had Brock Purdy on the team, said, Trey Lance is our unquestioned week one starter. He played a game in a monsoon, played three plays in another game, broke his leg. And now they have said he is out, maybe not even the backup, and Brock Purdy, the final pick of the draft we passed on seven times for drafting him, is our unquestioned starter. It is Bro, coming off Tommy John. Come you're right, coming a guy who was physically limited coming into the NFL, coming off surgery on his throwing arm. He is our unquestioned starter. It is one of the most indefensible processes I've ever seen. And I cannot believe everyone is just pretending to believe, oh, well, it, it's because Brock Purdy's awesome. Brock Purdy is not awesome. And I don't, I don't think it has been given enough attention how they have mismanaged this situation. You go ahead. Yo, so the black quarterback level of this is the lack of patience. And I don't necessarily mean that from Shanahan. I mean from fans. Just the, hey, Lance stinks. You've seen him play like three games. Yes. Like, I'm amazed at how certain they are that he stinks after seeing him play three games and how certain they are that Purdy is awesome after, after seeing, seeing play a, seven. By the way, a similar sample size to which you had before you said Jimmy Garoppolo was awesome before you ultimately understood that Jimmy Garoppolo was simply Jimmy Garoppolo, yes. right? That's the, the part for Lance that is frustrating in the discourse is that, just how quickly people are to dismiss him. Now, I watched some of them clips from the last game he played. He did look like rat ass. I don't want to pretend as though I do oh, not I, I think he looks bad, but I don't yeah. think that's – but I, I think that's almost – independent of yeah, that's a secondary point yes. right what confuses me about this they traded all those picks to get him and i don't think that this is a sunk cost fallacy right because i get the argument that well you shouldn't lean in on him just because you traded all those picks for him no that is exactly why you should lean on him right you once you decide we're going to trade three first round picks to go get this guy you're not saying and we're gonna see how this works out we're gonna make this work we go show up every day. There's going to be somebody with Trey on the phone, going through the playbook, whatever it is, and maybe they're doing these things. But I've seen no investment from the team to make sure that this trade, that, by the way, could cripple them for the next five years just because of what they're not getting back in terms right. of personnel. The fact that they're not like, nah, baby, we're going to one way or another make this work. And to me, the first step in we're going to make this work is – you're the backup. Even if you decide Brock Purdy's our starter this year, we're not entertaining this Sam Darnold. We're not that, entertaining this Sam part, Darnold. Shit, that's this the part crazy. to me that, that made this an even bigger story. Was if they want to say, 
Brock Purdy earned it. We believe in him. We found it. And the absolute diamond in the rough. His elbow is going to be fine. He's the yeah. starter. So be it. We know what Sam Darnold is. To not then say, Tra- not only is Trey Lance our backup, he's going to have a package. He's going to have a package because he does things mobility-wise yeah. Purdy can't do. So that, to me, is where I was like, this train's off the tracks. And here's the other part of it. Th- their quarterback evaluation process was, by just the, on- the the historical record, we love this player so much, we're trading three first-round picks to get him. We see him for one year in our building, in our practice, in our camp. We believe in him enough. We are telling Jimmy Garoppolo, you can't, your keys to the building are revoked. Tried to trade you to Washington. You have a surprise surgery, so we can't, but we wanted to. He's our guy. He is our week one starter. He then breaks his leg and is not able to play for months. So he went from deposing Garoppolo, week one unquestioned starter, to potential third string in OTAs? Right. When was it? It wasn't. It's not like, oh, he had terrible practices. The guy wasn't practicing. The guy had a broken leg last year. He wasn't practicing. None of it. And the, the trade part of it is that it, I, the, the Niners, when they did it, I believe the thought process was with the Shanahan system, we can be pretty damn good with just C-level, pardon me, C-level quarterbacking. If we were to get A-level quarterbacking, we will be the best team in the league by far. And by the way, I agree with that. Yeah, I think the Niners with that roster and that offense and that defense, now the defensive brain drain of losing Salah and losing D'Amico, we'll see how it works. That team, if they had a difference maker at quarterback, would be the best team in football, better than the Chiefs. So I get why they tried to do it. But if now they're pivoting back to just anybody, yeah. it is plug and play, then you, you know, do you know who was drafted? With the first first round pick, San Francisco traded away for Trey Lance because I'm looking at it right now. All right, so they made I can't even remember who they made that trade with. Well, it was it was like the it was Miami, but it was like a three. It was they had yeah. someone else's pick. Point is this: they were drafting at number twelve. Okay, I'm just going to tell you who went, how that top twelve of the draft went. It went Trevor Lawrence, obvious. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson who everyone locked in stone immediately. That was, the, never that made was strange, it. too. I knew that there was going to be no discussion about the number one pick. And they're like, and obviously the number two pick, Zach Wilson, whatever. Number three, Trey Lance, okay? Number four, Kyle Pitts, who I still think could be awesome. Number five, Jamar Chase, who unquestionably is awesome. Number six, Jalen Waddell, who is fantastic. Number seven, Panay Sewell. Number eight, J.C. Horn, guy popped his Achilles, hasn't worked out. Number nine, Pat Sertan II, who some people think is the best corner in yeah. football. Number 10, Devontae Smith. Number 11, Justin Fields, who I think could have been dynamic in this offense if you wanted to trade up for three and draft him. And number 12, sitting there at the pick the Niners traded away, is Micah Parsons. (laughs) (laughs) Micah Parsons and Nicky Bosa on that defense is what they traded away. Well, well, it, with with Fred Warner, by the way, right? Oh, yeah. With, with Fred Warner, with Armstead. But also think about this. If you just wanted a plug-and-play quarterback, you could have stayed there and got Corkle. Yes, correct. Corkle, you Corkle there was right there. Mac Jones. Exactly they right. tricked us into thinking they were trading up to get Corkle. Yeah, exactly right. And the you Or you could have stayed there, and if you wanted a dual threat, traded up a few spots and gotten Justin Fields when you see he's not going top five. And then, by the way, they didn't have – this is to your point. The 29th pick of the draft the next year would have been theirs, and they didn't have that. Now, that ended up being Cole Strange, mm-hmm. but you know, we'll see. And then this year, the draft pick they didn't have was – what pick was that? I'll, I'll find it. It's from San Francisco. Uh, the 29th pick again. So it's the 12th pick, the 29th pick, and the 29th pick for a guy you're not going to – who is getting less rope than any first – forget people talk about any top five quarterback. Any The only first-round quarterbacks to get this it's – the le, it's the least since Jim Drunkenmiller yeah. and Andre Ware. Yeah. And, the, and Andre Ware at least got years, but he just never right. got on the field, never got opportunities. But, but think about this. As we mentioned Sam Darnold here, 
You're telling me, we saw Sam Darnold play here, right? Yes. We know what time it was. We know what time it yes. wasn't. But you're telling me that Sam Darnold still has a chance to get better and yes. Trey Lance does not. And Sam Darnold, at his worst, who got all the opportunities, simply did not look like an NFL quarterback. But people are still willing to bet on the idea of Sam Darnold as the backup here than Trey Lance. And, Go ahead. And a number. this is another big one, and this is – Kyle Shanahan has to answer for this because he skated on it the last time. This will be the second time that you've had a top three quarterback and you broke him. Oh. And, the, and we blamed it the last time on the other guy. We blamed it on injuries with Robert Griffin, right? Like yep. we blamed it on injuries and everything else. But what was so wild about Griffin by the time you got to year three, really, and Shanahan was gone by then, but by the time you got to year three, he looked like he forgot how to do stuff that he knew how to do before. Correct. And now I'm looking at Trey Lance, and he looks utterly confounded in the preseason. So, genius man, what are you doing? Well, what I'm looking at with Trey Lance, and this is to me what matters, is the guy played 16 games as the starter at North Dakota State in 2019. He then played one game in 2020. Did not play in 2021 for the Niners. Well, no, that's not true. Played t two games in 2021 for the Niners and a game and a couple snaps in 2022. You drafted him knowing. All these played, things. He played almost no college football and was playing at the D2 level. To not assume it was that he was going to need some game action it's just baffling to me. All no, right, let's move on. But I'll say one last thing on that. Yeah. That's what happens when your boss didn't want you in the first place. So I've lived that like Shanahan didn't want to. But that's what that's exactly what I was about to say. But it doesn't make sense because Kyle Shanahan's completely in charge. You think he has more power than Lynch? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean he hired Lynch. Yeah, that's fair. So the it's baffling. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.